Dr. Ali Kofel, a Muslim staff student and friend of Dr. Kathleen Sanser, daughter of Mrs. Sanser. Mrs. Sanser, my French teacher, empowered us in Abbey Mall Abbey's. Whatever you do, do it to the best of your abilities. She displayed Abbey Quiet Place as a teacher and expected Abbey Quiet Place from us. She was the composed captain of her ship, giving you that guy if you are out of land. She showed respect and got respect. She knew how to keep, she knew how to keep our attention using fun and drama. For example, teaching us to count from 11 to 20, she put us to active out, demonstrating first in a booming voice. All those threads, da 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 what we learn with pleasure, who we never forget. That's a master teacher for you. It was not just a lesson in numbers. It was a lesson in emotional connection, a lesson to action. She surely brought joy and pleasure to the present moment in teaching. We were honored to have been taught by such a wonderful, empowering master teacher, nurturer, and nation builder. Or what has answered to our family? We thank you for sharing her with us. May the peace of God that passes all understanding bring joy to your hearts. Happy holidays. Thank you. A tribute to the life of Mrs. Bella Samson, Madame Samson, on behalf of the principal. Mrs. Colleen Montague, past principal, Mrs. Pamela Harrison, current and past members of staff, and past two legs of the Golden Trust High School Branch. Mrs. Velma Sanster joined the staff of Golden for a short stint from September 1960 to April 1961, then again Colleen from January 1967 to August 1996 when she retired. However, she was re-employed for a year, September 1998 to August 1999 when she acted for a teacher who was on leave. Mrs. Sanctus' tenure saw her working with principals Ms. Audrey Pinto and Mrs. Pamela Harris. Mrs. Sanster was very versatile, as originally she taught French, Spanish, and English. However, during the mid-1970s, she acquitted herself with professional qualifications in library studies and also function as a teacher librarian. In addition to all of this, Mrs. Sanster also taught some religious education in her latter years. Mrs. Sanster, who is a senior teacher, a second form year coordinator for many years. Many will remember her distinguished service in the modern languages department, specifically French, which she had taught throughout her career, but concentrated specifically on during the last 15 years of her teaching career in the law school, that is, forms one to three. A former vice principal and head of the French department, Mrs. Peggy Harris, had a good deal to say of Madame Sachs. She provided a stimulating classroom environment, creating jingles and rhymes to help her students remember grammatical rules, and she motivated her students to learn. Her classroom management was outstanding. Her discipline, her discipline was firm but fair, and she was always approachable. She believed that good manners should never be forgotten. 
as a key teacher in the law school in Fox 43. Madame Sandstone was integral in her French girls entering the French drama competitions in the junior category, and they always received their fair share of prizes for songs, dance, and poems. Jamaican folk songs were also translated to French by her, and she impressed the judges on innumerable occasions. The competitions didn't face Madame Sanderson, as her girls excelled, such as in the French vocabulary contest organized by the French Teachers Association, where the junior group won the shield by placing first in 1995, second in 1996, and won the Alisa Foster competition for second for students. Mrs. Sandstone displayed competence with a sense of duty, loyalty, and professionalism. Her aim was always to improve the standard of education. In 1996, the French government delivered a long service award through the French Embassy to Madame Sansa for over 30 years of teaching French in Jamaica. It was called the for devotion to the French language and culture. When Madame Sansa retired, it was said that Wilmers had lost the vital organ as she possessed a reservoir of talent and experience. One personal humorous memory of Madame Sangster was in the early 90s, when there was the January 12th earthquake while teaching in the second form. Some students found shelter under the teacher's desk she prompted this lady under the two lessons. <laughs> Thus prompting the adage, when trouble tell you, it was your picture. <laughs> Since her retirement, the Belmont Sanctuary Prize has been awarded to the best first form in French. John 9, verse 4. Says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. May light perpetually shine upon her and God grant her rest eternal.
and seek to win school admission and see high school conversion from the state where she excelled academically, placing sixth in the island of Trinidad with all school examinations of the Taylor and the King. Go ahead of the university, she took two terms at her alma mater. She was awarded a bursary to attend the University of the West Indies, which at that time was a college of the University of London, where she studied languages. She was a gifted linguist, studying English, French, Spanish, and yes, Latin, which she inflicted on her three four children with neglect. Despite that, none of her three children followed in her linguistic footsteps, much to her disappointment. After university, she decided to entertain teaching as a profession, moving to Montego Bay to teach at Montego Bay High School, and that would give some information about the courting, etc. After she and Dad got married, she took time off to look after her three young children. Eventually returned to teach in 1967 at Williams Girls High School, where she taught until her time. She loved every bit of it. Even after she retired, she would set up a woman in the library and visually in CXC and K exams. She even had teach Michael Besson and his schoolmates prepared for the secondary entrance examination to scratch the the label. And also had my eldest son prepared for CX English when she did such for eight months. Mom impacted the lives of thousands of kids. Her passion for education and teaching was the same from her first day of teaching until her last. She was one of the favorite teachers of her high school and was in my son's first school, and many of her former students kept in touch with her over the years. Mom chose to be a teacher not only for her passion for education, but also because of her love for her family. In the teacher gave her the summer and other holidays off to spend with her husband and children. It meant a lot to us that she was around to take us all to our extracurricular activities in Germany or help us with our whole work. We also found holidays which made my brothers and I closer to each other and our parents. Mommy never tired of learning and while looking after her family and teaching program, she did it with best and highly best and people in life studies. Mommy loved to do embroidery and she passed on that passion to me. In her latter years, she had journeyed up to school so in club, which would meet once a week. Mommy was happily married to dad for 61 years the mother of three children, Kathy, Peter, John, and David, and grandmother, four grandsons, Andrew, David, Dominic, and Derek. One of the stories Mommy told me while growing up here in the Second World War in Trinidad was about Christmas, where there was no Christmas tree in the house. So she and one of her brothers snuck out of the house one evening to go to one of the parks in the public state and cut a branch from one of the trees there and brought it home. She and her brother had been saving the silver caps and the bottles that were delivered every day, and they were using that to decorate the tree. All of a sudden, the door opened, and her father looked in at what they were doing, said nothing, and left, and came back home some time later with Christmas decorations to have been decorated the tree. Another story from her childhood, which I'm sure many of you can relate to, they gave me the little cast or the workers. And which she and her siblings tried their best to get out of, especially when they were back to the house. Fortunately, she never did that at us. I remember when mom was pregnant with David, I told her that I wanted a sister. So I was very disappointed when he told her to be another brother. So I reasoned, well, Peter has not had a brother to play with. So I told her that she could have another baby and provide me the sister I wanted. And you know what she told me? She said, when you grow up, you get married and have daughters. She said, grow up, but married and have sons. <laughs> anyway, but David repeated himself. He got married and tried to get sister. My grace is still so here. All right. So, Mommy was the greatest still here. So much so that she was able to keep all her class to her, even when other teachers were not. And when asked how she did it, she said that she expected the children to behave in her class. And they did. But despite being a great scenario, she was also loved by the students. David remembers meeting her girl at the And when she heard his name, asked if his mother was Mrs. Sanchez and one of girls, and Kelly looked at her funnily. And she told him, it's not what you think. Tell her hello for me. <laughs> she made me feel like I can fly. <laughs> Mommy was very diligent when it came to teaching. If she didn't finish marking the children's work, she would bring the children to her home to mark. And you know what a great old lot of school was. We three children. In addition, if she was sick and couldn't go 
had gone to the school to work for her classes, and he had to go back in and go to the work. <laughs> Thank you. 